Hi, I'm Sean Leach, and welcome to another episode of Bus Talk on the Road. Today we're at Jackson Public Schools to learn about how to get your EV fleet ready for winter. Let's go take a look. Bus Talk. Hi, Cal. Hi, Sean. Today I'm with Kyle Mackey, Director of Technical Development and Support with Highland Fleets. So, Kyle, now that it's freezing cold out and winter is here, what are depot managers concerned about with respect to operating EV school buses? Yeah, Sean, it's a great question. There's several things. Uh, you know, first and foremost is probably range anxiety. You know, it's colder now. Batteries, you know, they need to be warm. Uh, I always say they're like my grandma, they want to be 70 degrees, right? You can't do that when it's negative 12 degree, degrees like today. Uh, another one is possibly how does it handle in the ice and snow, right? The roads are slick with the of braking, the torque these electric motors have. There's several different variables. How are they going to handle in those conditions? Uh, are the heaters going to be able to handle these cold weathers? You know, with the diesel bus, they're, they're out constantly creating heat. What's the electric heaters going to do? And another one that, that operators are really thinking about is what are my chargers going to do in the winter time? What's my charge time going to look like? What about the holsters? Are you going to get frozen in the handles? In terms of operating a diesel fleet versus an EV fleet, what are some of the things that depot managers should know? Just like a diesel bus, we need to precondition the bus. And what I mean by that is the diesel fleets today, we plug in at night and let the blocks warm up. Same thing with our buses. We develop charge cycles or charge schedules, we call them, to allow the bus to charge throughout the night to keep those batteries warm. They're more efficient that way, helps with heating up the bus because now your heat's not going to the batteries first, they're going to the cabin. So with the preconditioning, with the charging schedule, having the bus drivers come in, warm the buses up while they're getting ready in the morning, help keep the cabin nice and warm and toasty for the kids, it allows us to precondition, get the buses on the route, make them run efficiently and keep the kids happy. You know, if done properly, the time to precondition a bus in the morning should take you less time than your diesel fleet today. So as long as everyone's following the steps, it actually should be faster. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you tell us more about how the outside temperature actually impacts EV's range? Going back to the preconditioning, if we do not precondition the batteries, the vehicle will not allow the regenerative braking to add energy to the battery. The battery's too cold, it can't accept the regenerative braking. So that's a big factor. We gotta keep the batteries warm once again to allow regenerative braking to do its job. With the colder condition, the heaters are running and not only the cabin, but trying to keep the battery warm. And drivers just need to be aware, you're not gonna get the same efficiency as you did in the fall or springtime. But as long as they follow the steps, they should have adequate range for their routes. Yes, that's correct. And that's why regenerative braking, no matter what season of the year it is, is very important to make sure that we get the efficiency that we need to run our routes. How do these electric buses actually handle in the snow? How do they drive and perform? Yeah, so the electric buses are actually heavier than the diesel buses. Um, their batteries between the frame rails and low actually help to center our gravity. They handle really, really well. So Kyle, the depot staff gets here in the morning, the snow everywhere, what should they do? Yeah, Sean, it's very similar to your diesel operation, minus the fact that now we have to unplug the bus. So I would go over to the bus, make sure the snow is removed away from the port, unplug the, port, the candle, wind your cable back up and put it back in the holster. Uh, we want to make sure our cable is out of the way in case we do any snow plowing later. We don't want to cause any damage. Um, but yeah, just want to make sure that the dust covers are back on the charge port to make sure we keep snow and ice out of there. Um, like I said, very similar to your diesel operations today. And if they happen to find a charge port that's frozen in, the handle's frozen into the port, what should they do? Yeah, the best thing we suggest for that is using a heat gun. Um, just add a little bit of heat to the area um, to help free that up. Once you get that warm, press the button, pull it out. The last thing we want to do is do not do not dump a bunch of hot water on there. For plastic components, we could crack things. We also don't want to add any water into the uh, connections of the charge port. It's been great learning about how EVs operate in the winter and that it's actually pretty straightforward and pretty simple to do this. So let's go warm up. Yeah, it's been great. Let's go, Sean. Thanks for joining us today on Bus Talk. We're hoping that this episode really demonstrated that running an EV bus fleet in the winter time is actually really easy. We'll see you next time. I'm Sean Leach.